right click tools in DaVinci Resolve can seriously speed up your editing. And the best part is a lot of people don't even know that these things exist. That's why today I'm gonna cover seven of my favorite right click tips here in DaVinci Resolve to help you stay organized, help you edit faster, and help you save time on every project. And before we jump in, a big thank you to Artlist for sponsoring today's video. We're gonna take a look at the new Sora AI video tool. It's ridiculous. You've probably seen videos around the internet about it, but we're gonna take a look at that tool and how it works. But for now, let's jump into Resolve, talk about these right click tools. The first one here, a real time saver. Let's go. In DaVinci Resolve here, I'm currently in the edit tab. And the first one that is gonna save you tons of time is right click to add a transition. If you put your mouse right in between your two clips, you can right click and say, add a two frame, six frame, 12 frame, or 24 frame. In this case, cross dissolve. It's gonna use whatever your default transition is. Let's say I want to add a 24 frame cross dissolve. Zoom in a little more so we can see it. There we go, boom, it throws the cross dissolve right on there. Now, if you want to use a different transition as default, real quick, you could come into your effects library, transitions, look for the one that has this little red dot, that's gonna be your default transition. If you wanted to change it, you can just come to any transition, right click, set as standard transition. So now if I were to delete this and I wanna add it again, right click, add 24 frame, cross dissolve. And you can see now it's using the dip to color dissolve. Being able to right click and add your transitions like that is gonna save you time from having to drag and drop every time from the effects library down onto your timeline. The next right clip can save you a lot of time when you've got a lot of effects or things happening on your clip that are just slow to play back. So in this case, if we look at this clip right here, I'm gonna open my inspector, show you the effects. I've got zoom blur, split tone, film damage, reflections, motion trails. And if I try to play it back, I think we can cut that up and use it, but let's... Very choppy, right? The tip is this. If you right-click on your clip, you can come up to a render in place. You can choose the file name. You can choose the format. I'm going to say MP4. You can choose your codec. I'm going to say H.265. Change any of the other things you might like, and I'm going to go ahead and say render. It'll pop up a window asking you where you want to save the render in place. I'm going to just put it in my draft folders for right now. For the project, I'm going to hit open. And then DaVinci Resolve is going to go through and render that media for you. And it's going to play back super smooth because it already did all the processing. It's already done. It's rendered out and you can play it back a whole lot smoother. And once that file's rendered, you're going to see it says render in the timeline here. Now, if I play back through it, it should play back perfectly smooth. All right. That was good. That was good. I think we can cut that up and use it. But let's just try it again. <laughs> Whatever. All right. So the render in place is going to eliminate that laggy playback for you when it comes to using a lot of effects or complex fusion things or anything like that. Another great right click tool here is the create compound clip. Let's say in my timeline, I've got a whole bunch of stuff. I want to keep it all together. It's edited up the way I want it to be. I'm going to select everything that I want to include. Then I'm just going to right click and say new compound clip. You're going to get this window. You can name it whatever you want and then hit create. So now we just see one clip on our timeline, but it has everything built into it. You can see our different text, different things that I just threw in the timeline here. They're all bundled together in one nice clip. So this can help keep your timeline looking neat and tidy and just keep everything grouped together really quick and really easy. All right, before we jump into the next right click tool tip here, a quick thank you to Artlist for sponsoring today's video. If you haven't checked out Artlist's new AI tools, they're seriously next level. They just introduced the new Sora 2 AI text to video tool. And what it can do is nothing short of amazing. You can type in a simple text prompt and then Sora is gonna create an incredible cinematic video that looks like it was straight out of a movie. Then you can combine it with Artlist's massive catalog of music and sound effects to really bring everything to life. And it looks amazing. You could use it for B-rolls, intros, storytelling. Really, it's kind of limitless on what you can do with it. For example, I jumped on the website and I asked, create a cinematic drone shot flying over a mountain lake at sunrise. I've selected the Sora 2 Pro model. Select your other options, go ahead and click generate. All right, so that video is done. Let's take a look at what it did. It even added some music in the background for us. Check this out. I only made a four second clip there, so it's really short, but I mean, ridiculous here. It's, it's, it looks so good. It looks real, it looks real. And just to try another video here with the Sora 2, said a man stops truck, puts it in park, and gets out of his truck. All right, is that crazy or is that crazy? That looks like a real dude. 
there's no way you could tell that that was AI generated. No way, how would you know? Amazing, amazing. If you wanna try it for yourself, I left the link in the description below. You can jump over to Artlist, give it a try. It's really a game changing tool. If you're a creator that can't get out to all of these really cool locations, you want drone shots, but maybe you don't have a drone, a tool like this can really help create those little snippets and scenes or B-roll for your film or your project and just really help bring everything together and just make your overall project more awesome. All right, now let's jump back into Resolve and talk about the next right-click tool that's gonna help save you time here in DaVinci Resolve. Let's go. Now, what if you have a compound clip like this and you wanna expand it and break out all those clips right in your timeline? Really easy. We're gonna select our clip, right-click, come up to Decompose in Place, and I'm gonna choose Using Clips Only. And you can see it's right back to where we had it. Now, another really cool thing that you could do is if you don't want to open it up and expand it back in your timeline, if I just undo that, I can select my clip, right click, and choose open in timeline. And now I can edit those clips all together, but they're going to stay in my main timeline as just one clip there. So I can make any changes I might want, move some stuff around. And then all I have to do is close it, come back to my regular timeline, and those changes will be reflected in this clip. So really handy. The decompose in place is a great tool. And as a bonus, that open in timeline is great as well. So when it comes to multicam clips, I've got one in my timeline here. You can see my three different angles. If I were to right click on that clip, I can come up to open in timeline and that's going to open up the multicam clip for me. Now I cannot decompose it in place, but I can open it in the timeline. And now you're going to see all of my multicam angles here and I can move things, shift things around, add new tracks, do whatever I want. Then all I have to do is just close it and my multicam clips will get updated automatically. So it's really handy to use these two different features when it comes to working with compound clips, you can decompose in place or open in timeline. And when it comes to working with multicam clips, you can open them in the timeline, make any adjustments and then close it. And it's all right through the right click menu. Super easy. The next right click tool here is if you want to instantly fix your audio levels, check it out. In my timeline, I've got a bunch of different clips. I'm going to select my clip. I'm going to right click and we're going to choose normalize audio levels. And when this comes up, you can click the drop down. You're going to have different options here. Personally, I like to use the sample peak program because it gives me a target level of minus nine dB. And if you know anything about me, you've watched my channel. When it comes to audio levels for dialogue, you want to be around minus 10 dB give or take a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and hit normalize. And then it's going to go ahead and change those levels for us. So really quick and easy just to get a good baseline of your audio levels, whether it's music, dialogue, sound effects, doesn't matter. You can get a good baseline. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you use some of these methods here to normalize, it's just making a volume adjustment broadly across the whole clip. So sometimes you might have a little part that peaks a little bit louder. For example, right here in my clip, if I play through that, look at my meter. By the end, you're going to be, you can see that's where it probably peaks up, you know, rather high. There might be another little spike in there. So everything else might be a little quiet. I recommend just figuring out how to do it uh, manually and set your levels a little bit better. But in a pinch, the normalize is going to do a good job for you and get you in the ballpark. The next right click tip, we're going to jump into the color tab for this one. I like this one a lot. Let's say I have this clip right here. Let's say I did some color grading. I'm just going to make some random changes here. Uh, boost some things up, change some things around because I just making it look a little weird, whatever. You get your grade all set. Let's say, hey, that looks beautiful. All you have to do is come to this and right click on here and we can say grab a still and that's going to essentially grab that color grade for us and save it as like a preset, right? And you can see it's up over in here. If I scrub over it, I can see it. And let's say on this clip right here, I want to apply the same grade. Well, I've got my power grade right here. All I have to do is drag and drop it on here. Boom. Now this clip has the exact same color grade. So by right clicking, grab a still, does a really great job. It's like saving a preset of your color grade. You can easily apply it anywhere you want. As a little bonus tip here, if you put it in the stills gallery right here, it's going to be specific to that project. If you want this color grade available in all your projects, go ahead and click on power grade. You'd put it in here and this is where you can access it in any project. So let's say I like this color grade. Boom. There we go. We're good to go. So right click, grab a still. It's going to save you a lot of time when it comes to color grading. Jumping back into the edit tab or anywhere that you have access to your media pool. This one I use a lot. If I'm trying to find a file, I'm not sure where I put it, but I've got it in my media pool. I can come to any file that I want, select it, 
right click and come down to reveal in Finder for me, because I'm on a Mac. Might say reveal in uh, Windows Explorer or whatever for you if you're on Windows. Go ahead and click that. Boom, it's going to bring me right to the directory where that file is on my hard drive. And maybe I have something like the Resolve logo. I'm like, ah, I don't remember where I put it, but it's in here. Maybe I have it in a power bin and I don't remember where I originally put it. Right click. Reveal in Finder. Boom, there we go. It's in all my logos for Blackmagic Design in the folder that I've got on my hard drive. Super easy to find stuff when you've got it in your media pool, but you're not sure where it is on your hard drive. Simple right click and boom, there you go. You're going to know exactly where it's at. A little bonus right click tool here that I find very handy when you're working with your audio. Maybe you've got a problem where it's only coming out of the left side, the right side, something's not sounding right, or you've got some synced up good dialogue, but if you can't hear it, it's not working. Select your audio clip, right click, come up to clip attributes, come to the audio section and right here we've got the options to select different source channels. So if we linked any audio, we would see that here. You can change it from stereo to mono or any other format if you want. But a lot of times if you're running into problems with your audio, it's only coming from one channel and not the other. You want to jump in here, you can set whatever you need for your source channels, making sure it's going to left and right channels or whatever it might be. A lot of times you're going to have to jump in here and just fix something real quick. That in combination with your track being a mono or stereo, it should just kind of be able to fix up whatever your problem is and then you should be able to be good to go. Here's another bonus right click tool that I found pretty interesting. I don't use it that often, but I could see where it might come in handy. That is if I have multiple timelines open, right? I've got them in different tabs here and make sure that you have stacked timelines on so that you can see more than one timeline. If I were to come to this one and right click on here, I can say load timeline into source viewer. And what that's going to do is put it up into my source viewer. So now you can see my entire timeline is up here in the source viewer and that's going to be indicated by having a blue line here as well as a blue title right there. So you can see, for example, I'm in a different timeline here and I have my other timeline up on top of the screen here. So it could allow you to grab part of another timeline and bring it into the timeline that you're currently working in. It's just a unique option there that uh, is new here in Resolve 20 and it's something that you might find handy. And just an extra little bonus right click tool tip here for you. If you're working with keyframes and you're in your keyframe viewer in the edit tab here and you have the parameters brought up, you've got a couple keyframe points, you can come to any keyframe, right click, and you can change the type of easing for that keyframe really quick or you could hit the trash can and just delete it. Boom, it's gone. So there you have it, a bunch of right-click tools that are going to help speed up your workflow, save you some time, and hopefully just make it a little bit easier for you to edit your projects. A big thank you to Artlist for sponsoring today's video. How about that Sora stuff? I mean, ridiculous, right? I mean, AI videos are getting so good that you can't even tell the difference a lot of times. It's pretty insane. If you want to check out Artlist and the new Sora tool, link down in the description below. You can check that out. So big thank you to Artlist. And do you have any other right-click features or tools that you use in Resolve all the time? Drop me a comment down below because we all want to know what you guys use and uh, how we can speed up our workflow with all these different cool tools. With that said, I'm out of here. I will see you in the next video. Peace. Peace.